Hey everyone, welcome to my Florida butterfly garden. I've turned my entire backyard into a garden for the benefit of butterflies, caterpillars, and other pollinators, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I share what I do with you. Last episode or video, we left off right in the middle of planting out my wildflower garden. So we're gonna continue on with that and then see where the garden leads us. There's the inspector making sure everything was done right. Are we good? Are we good, Ringo? <laughs> and next on the plant list is Maryland Golden Aster. You know, I feel like everybody has a golden aster. We had Savannah and Georgia. So Georgia actually has two. And then now Maryland's got one. Does Florida have an aster? Hmm. Florida should have an aster. Hairy golden aster. <laughs> Next one going in. I suppose we'll find out why it's hairy when it blooms, maybe. Y'all, I'm on my last two plants. So I have a white indigo, and then this little guy right here is a fringed blue star. And you know what? It's unfortunate. I have a lot of space left, so I'm gonna have to go shopping for more plants. I literally just found some Eastern Black Swallowtail eggs and they were just laid. How do I know this? Because I just took the plant out of one of the enclosures to let it grow back and it's got eggs. So we're going to cover them. I'm watering my new wildflower garden using my most fabulous irrigation system. It's literally being held by two stems of a growing back penta. <laughs> Let those pentas work for me, right? Look at that little golf fritillary. He got caught, caught in the water. <laughs> So see right here, I just pulled this pot out and see them all. What's nice about this is that there's not like 50 of them. So that's manageable. That's manageable. This is fennel that is growing back, and these eggs belong to Eastern Black Swallowtail Caterpillars. There's also um, parsley in here, because they'll host on that as well, but I usually find that they lay the eggs on the fennel, but I have parsley there because then they have that additional food source if they eat all the fennel. And there we go. Look at there. There's a gorgeous queen. That one's much larger than that other one. I am so glad to see at least two queens, possibly three, in my garden. And one was laying eggs. I caught this morning. I took um, a cutting or some leaves in that had eggs on them. I'm hoping they were the queen's eggs, but either way, I got some eggs. Uh, but I was worried there for a little bit because I hadn't seen queens for a little while. But they're back. That makes me very happy. So I did have a couple of other plants that I picked up that day at the nectary. One of them is Florida Mountain Mint, which is right here. 
but it likes a moist, wet, marshy area. So it's right here on the edge of my wetland garden where it will be much happier than it would have been over in my wildflower garden. And another one that I got wants 100% shade. So I planted it over here. Oh, look at you, look at you. It's enjoying the, the rain. <laughs> okay, so I planted the other one over here in my, oh, I'm in the sprinkler. Woo, that feels good. In my shade garden, and that is the late purple aster. So we'll see what that looks like when it blooms. Speaking of native plants, right here is my frost weed. It's not new. It's been here in my shade garden, but it's getting ready to bloom. You guys, this sulfur that's flying away, there, has been loving this hibiscus. I don't think I've ever really noticed any butterfly nectaring on this hibiscus. I just must like the hibiscus, which makes me super happy because I look at this huge plant taking all this space and think, what is this really doing for my butterfly garden? But it's beautiful, it's variegated, and I love the flower. So it's here because I love it. But now it makes me happy to know it is also serving a purpose for the butterflies. The next area that needs just a little work is right behind me. This Maypop Passion Vine, which is Passiflora Incense, is kind of taking over everything and just needs a little containment. If you recall, I put some trellises in down along the side here for it to grow in and to also hold up my bee balm. Look how gorgeous that flower is. But now it's growing all down. Look at all these buds. I mean, oh my gosh, this incense is crazy. Look at this. <laughs> there, there's one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it is now encroaching on my work table and it's going all the way down there. I've actually wound it up around that trellis there. Oh, look, there's the queen. How beautiful. It's just so gorgeous. I love this just hanging out with me all afternoon. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I picked up another couple of trellis pieces. I think I'm going to just drop them in right here for it to continue growing through. I don't want to go that way and wind all in my pentas. You can kind of see it from here. Look, there's a goldenrod right here that it it's, keeps wrapping around. I keep pulling it off. So... It just needs to be maintained. Oh, you guys, I want to show you another super cool thing that I found in my garden. One of my swamp milkweeds has grown and the stems that are supposed to split off and separate didn't. And so there's two and then it splits to three, but they're all stuck together. I, I kind of think it's really neat. I'm hoping it's some kind of genetic variation that if it produces seeds, <laughs> I don't know, maybe they'll do it too. I don't know, but let me show you. It's really cool. Okay, so here's the one stem. And then you can see right here, it starts with a little division. And you can see the two stems that are fused together. And then right here, you can see where there's, actually it looks like there's four at the top. Is that not something? Look at that. Have you seen anything like that? Maybe this is common. 
and I just don't know about it. It's quite possible. But what I love is like there's this large clump of leaves at the top of it because they're all together. And look, it's going to flower. So hopefully I will get some seeds. Isn't that cool? And my bush mint is almost as tall as me also. And it is blooming like crazy. And little pollinators love it. There's these big, long, black. Yeah, there's one there. I mean, they're always here. Oh, come here, booger. He's... Usually they stay when I'm here. Like, they have no problem with me. But when they know I'm talking about them and trying to film them, maybe one will come back. But I think they're so pretty. And here, I just put this in here to keep the rats away. And wasn't even expecting it to be such a gorgeous addition to my wetland garden. Look at that little guy. Look, he's trying to run away too. Isn't he an interesting little thing? He's on my bush mint, too. Oh, look. There's one of the ones I was talking about. See? He's bluish. I know I've videoed them before. But these guys love the pollen in this bush mint. And now, I am going to go sit in my chair and drink my green juice and enjoy my garden. Hey y'all, it is Monday. I just got home from work and my scarlet rose mallow has not one, but two blooms. I can finally show you how gorgeous those flowers are. Look at how huge they are. I mean, you can just see them from across the whole yard. Look at this flower. If you do not have these, I highly suggest getting some, although they do very breezy can you tell they do like a wetland setting but look at them what an incredibly beautiful flower so now I'd be curious to watch and make some observations to see if anybody any butterflies or anyone like nectars from them but I'm just thrilled that there were two blooming today so I could show them to you. What a great thing to come home from work and find. Look at this cute little guy right here. He is going to be a butterfly soon. Hey y'all, it is Tuesday after work and um, just coming out in my garden is kind of fun. Not being out here all day, every day, although I love that the most, but like there can be surprises to be found when I haven't been in my garden for a while, you know? You can go check for caterpillars, maybe see a new butterfly or a new flower that has bloomed. So I'm just gonna go run through and see what I see and just have fun and enjoy it. And I have some really cute monarch caterpillars I'm going to show you real quick. So these guys have been inside my Florida room because I am not having any more of my monarchs disappear. Look at the perfection of these adorable monarch caterpillars. So they have pretty much eaten all of this balloon milkweed. And then I also put a pot of some twine vine in here. <laughs> Where are you going, sir? <laughs> Let's try this. Okay. 
Now what are you going to do? How about we put you right over here where there's more leaves? Yeah. There you go. So I'm going to go out. I have another balloon milkweed that I'm going to switch out and bring in here for these guys. And then put this balloon milkweed out. <laughs> <laughs> where it can do some growing back and I also want to show you these are the leaves that I mentioned that I brought in and as you can see there's lots of holes <laughs> so there's got to be caterpillars and uh, they're probably on the other side because they like to be on the underside but there's one right there Let's see if we can zoom in Look at all the little frass down below. Okay, so there's one baby. And let me tell you, let me tell you what I did here. If you're wondering what this is. These are um, moisture wicking um, sheets of fabric that come in the seed starting kits that you can order on Gardener Supply. They look like this, and they lay on the seed tray, and um, there's like a raised thing, and the edge of it tucks down, and so the water wicks up through this. So the seed tray is always sitting on this that stays moist. Now, I didn't find that I love them for that purpose, but let me tell you something. If you bring in cuttings of leaves, look at how fresh these leaves look. These leaves have been in here now for five days. And all I did was I cut it up. I put one sheet at the bottom. And then I, I cut this little rectangle. And then I set all the, stem, the leaves in there. And then I just laid this over the base of each leaf and look at how fresh they stayed it's incredible I wonder if this will work for other things now so anyway that's this little thing I tried and if you have a, um, honestly you know what now that I think about it I think you can buy these um, separate from the seed trays like as refills to reuse on new on the seed trays i don't know what they're called but if you go on gardener supply and search uh their seed trays i bet you'll find this as an option wasn't that helpful i'm i'm not very helpful in, in that but it's working well so <laughs> i just wanted to share that this leaf this leaf here like it has somebody can you see the little can you see the little shadow <laughs> let's turn it over looky there another baby so that's two babies and then I'm betting there's somebody here let me pull this out there we go so it looks like I've got three babies so that's so exciting y'all I haven't brought eggs in it's been a minute because OE hang on let me put this down and then I'll chat with you face to face um, as a person a human being who loves nature and loves living things OE is, is very hard to take. It is, it's devastating when you see that butterfly just struggling. Like it knows it wants to fly and it just can't. Like it just makes you want to cry. And in Florida, we have such a high occurrence of it that I really haven't been raising as many monarchs. Um, and I, I just raise a few enough like for my garden. But I haven't, I mean, you haven't seen me releasing any in a while. And again, all those ones that I did raise got eaten. We're just not. 
So anyway, it's just kind of nice having some eggs back in and some tiny babies and I just hope, I hope, I hope that they come out okay. I'll be feeding them fresh cleaned plants, leaves and um, I don't know, we'll see. But I love them. I love them. So I'm super happy, super happy to have teeny tiny monarch caterpillar babies in my Florida room again. Here's a little beautiful white peacock hanging out on the frog fruit host plant. Well, I just finished watering my garden and I'm about to head in for the night. I didn't ever put the trellis in to tame my Maypop um, incense, but that there's still, there's still time for that. So I wanted to let you know, I've got a cart full of pentas and a couple, just a couple other things um, that Catherine's gonna be picking up on Friday. So if you're wanting some of my red pentas, you should go to the nectary this Saturday because they'll be there. And um, one other thing, if you're watching this video, that means you've made it to the end and you must have liked something. <laughs> so if you did, I'd love it if you would tap the subscribe button. Also tap the little thumbs up to say that you liked my video and say hello to me in the comments. Just type hello, just so I know you're there, and I'll say hello back, and thank you for watching, thank you for supporting my channel. Every new subscriber, every tap of the like button, every comment tells YouTube, hey, we're interested in this channel, and they'll push my channel out to more people. So just by doing those three things, you are helping spread the word of butterfly gardening and helping inspire more people to put butterfly gardens in and therefore increasing the population and getting a little bit more habitat out in the world for them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.